Guys, Bitcoin is about to make a decisive move. Today, I'm going to talk about what you need to know going into the start of this week, why we're going to see a significant move in Bitcoin. I am going to talk about the grayscale situation as well. When are they going to stop selling? Well, we have some insights into that right now. So guys, make sure to stick around from the beginning until the end. I will show you why now is the time to be extra bullish on Bitcoin guys. So welcome back everybody. My name is Chris bringing you cryptocurrency videos every day teaching you how to make money in this market. If you're new to the channel then make sure to subscribe and activate the bell right now. So let's get straight into it guys. So what you can see here for Bitcoin is that we are still inside of this orange box in between the lower edge which is forty thousand dollars approximately and forty two thousand dollars and since we broke down from this point guys i've been saying that i am expecting bitcoin to continue to trend in within this range here and i am still expecting that so this is what i see happening for a little while longer until we have a major catalyst for a bitcoin move to the downside or to the upside. Today I'm going to talk also about a couple of what those catalysts actually might be here very very soon. But the overall trend, the overall idea for me is still the same. We see the traditional markets continue towards the upside, making all-time high after all-time high, right? So the traditional markets are going up. The liquidity in the markets is going to increase. Yes, we're seeing Bitcoin in a little bit of a uh, you know, sideways movement stage, I would say, because I do not think that you're going to have any massive dumps for Bitcoin, but we could continue to trend down a little bit like this, right? So we could continue to do this for a little while, but overall, the trend is still, for me, when I look at everything that's happening and with the halving coming up, everything is still in line with what I want to see here for Bitcoin. And I still think that Bitcoin is going to see much higher prices in a whether it takes two weeks five months a year i don't know but we are eventually going to see much higher prices for bitcoin that is what i believe so i am not too worried about some short-term downside this is something you already know about now uh, a couple of catalysts for this week so on tuesday we're going to have the interest rate decision from the bank of japan so that is going to be interesting to see this is going to definitely affect the markets and then you have the uh, ECB rate decision and press conference on Thursday together with the uh, quarter four GDP growth rate. But then on Friday, you have a big one. And the data that we've been seeing here recently showing us that inflation might start to come back up again. Well, what we can see is that on Friday, you have the PCE data being released. And this is the thing that the Fed goes mostly out of. So on Friday, you are definitely going to have some volatility for Bitcoin, depending on the outcome of this data that is going to come out. So uh, if you think that Bitcoin has been boring here for a little while, and yes, it has been, like for, for the last, what is that, two weeks, Bitcoin has been, uh, well, not two weeks, but more like one week, Bitcoin has been going sideways here, uh, but may so be that we are about to see some more volatility come back into the market, which is going to be very, very nice to see. Now, for Grayscale, we're obviously watching them and seeing if they continue to dump Bitcoin here, if people continue to sell Bitcoin. Uh, current uh, amount of holdings for Grayscale on Bitcoin is 573,000 Bitcoin. So they still have a huge amount. But if you look at what's been happening here, maybe we are about to see a slowdown. And Mike Novogratz also uh, discussed the idea that Grayscale is going to be completely liquidated. So what uh, he's saying here is that I uh, disagree with this, that you're going to see incredible dumps from Grayscale and that you are going to see incredible amount of selling from Grayscale in the next few weeks. While I think that people will sell GBTC, I think most will switch into other ETFs. So this is also potentially why we are in general seeing actually a net inflow into the ETFs. Even if Grayscale is selling a lot of Bitcoin, uh, there's also a lot of ETFs that are seeing a lot of people buying Bitcoin through the ETF, right? So overall, it is about break even, but this is just a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear right now with the Grayscale situation. So let's not miss the forest through the trees. This is going to be making it far easier for boomers to buy Bitcoin. And you can get four to five times leverage on the Bitcoin exposure. This will end and Bitcoin will be higher in 
six months. So this actually makes sense, but yeah, just like I said, there's just a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear in the market regarding so much Bitcoin that Grayscale has and are they going to continue to dump? Once we see this start to slow down, um, then I think that, yeah, this is going to be really, really good. Uh, also, in terms of the halving that is coming up here, uh, usually in the year of the halving this year, uh, we do usually see a little bit of uh, dumps, which we have seen already. Remember, we have seen like from 48 to 40. Uh, but if you look at the ROI after the halvings, every single halving, we have obviously gone up. Um, so do you think that we are not going to go up after this year's halving? Let me know down in the comment section. That would be the first time in Bitcoin's history that we do not overall trend upwards once we have had the halving. Okay, so that is something also that I am paying attention to. And for altcoins, guys, I just want to remind you the end game in crypto for me is to buy as much Bitcoin and potentially Ethereum, but especially Bitcoin as possible. I'm using altcoins as a tool to increase my Bitcoin stack in general. Because what you can see is that over 50% of the tokens listed on CoinGecko since 2014 has died. And I would go as far as say that probably more like 95% have either died or they just, yeah, they have failed, failed projects essentially. So 95% out of all the altcoins out there. So uh, this is something to pay attention to as well. The end game for me is to buy as much Bitcoin as possible. But of course, with altcoins, you can have more short-term gains and then you cycle that into Bitcoin. That is my strategy. We will see, or we have seen, but we will continue to see if that is going to be uh, the uh, good strategy to use or not. Guys, this is what I got for you. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I will see you in the next one.